When you said that you feel that currently there is no other teachings out there similar to these, um, I got very curious, first of all, because I know you're not going to be around for a while, and I feel I would benefit from having some other sources that I could um, from time to time look into to get support on my ongoing journey. But also because it would almost feel like incompassionate from the cosmic soul that there is no other place in the world where some of similar things are being said for all the people that somehow haven't uh, come in contact with you. It almost feels like they have no teachings then to guide them. And also in my sort of like current still limited time that I've listened to your teachings, I do somehow feel quite some connection to some other teachings, like for example, even the mother book from Sri Aurobindo or Satsri and his new Dharma teachings, or even some of the ways of how Ken Wilber explains or Kashmiri Shaivism, I somehow see a lot of overlap and I guess I just want to confirm with you whether those can be legitimate sources that are in line with you that I can trust to uh, use or whether you really feel no, it's only here, wait for my book, wait for the sad songs again, which feels a little like, well. I said from what I know, because one can't know what all is happening in this world, my feeling is that there must be teachers who are saying what I'm saying, but I don't know where they are, and none of my students have found them. I'm talking about something very precise. Let's say the, the theories of Ken Wilbur, for example, they encompass very many different approaches, and he's a very eclectic acharya, actually. We would call him an acharya here. One can always find elements that overlap, certainly, because otherwise it would be strange. You know, it's not like some egg that dropped from orc or something. It's certainly also part of the spiritual trajectory. So if you're searching for overlap, you will find it. That about Ken Wilbur, mother of Pondicherry, again, you'll find overlap when one looks for it, certainly. When I say that what is being said here is not being said elsewhere, it is in its reference to Neo-Advaita, the specific references to Neo-Advaita and the practices of Neo-Advaita and the commentary on those practices and the inspirations to those who have practiced those practices and are approaching the mental institutions. That's what I mean. Also, the teaching here does not have the references to the, to the cosmic experiences that the mother of Pondicherry's and Sri Aurobindo's teachings bring. This is a very simple story. It's for simple people. If one wants to, one can sit in one's own home and start to surrender to the soul. Seen from that point of view, I have not come across this kind of simplicity and also this kind of precision in the understanding of the build-up right down from the cellular consciousness upward to the Agnya Chakra and its description of the perception. I feel very strongly though that there must be somewhere around the world teachers who are bringing even this kind of simplicity and, and precision. The thing is in 20 years I have been teaching and I didn't even have a website till two years ago because it is very crucial when you are bringing a new teaching like this, which is not just simply about what I speak in the satsangs, it's that huge a body of knowledge and it covers that precisely, that many aspects of life, that if I were to start answering questions, there would be no end. I can answer non-stop thousands of questions and put sense into each one's head through that. There's no end. Because it's, it's that big, that, that whole story. Then two years ago, I agreed that a website is okay, which is kept at a very minimum and nobody even knows about it. Because first, we need to have 
enough people who are actually feeling this. Now we have that. It's like a critical mass. And now I don't have to do much, it will anyway go to the world. There is no egoistic sort of statement here that this is the only way. Not at all, I'm not stupid. I wouldn't ever say something like that. I wouldn't dare to, to start I with. I that way. So that's what I'm saying. This is not like some religion and now either you're here or you're there. It's more that this kind of precision and this kind of clarity, if somebody, the, the, the peanut seller on the street as well as some great German intellectuals from Tübingen are both touched by this, it's because it's so simple, it's clear. And if you want to have some mental conceptual gymnastics and entertainment, you can read anything, you can read Kant if you want. But when it comes to the practical, that, that existential, that existential pain and sadness of a seeker that hasn't touched the truth, then this is a good place to be, is what I feel. And I have to say in this context that I absolutely love Ken Wilber. I've thought he's an amazing man. Andrew Cohen, you know, Andrew even came to visit me and sat in a private meeting with me and asked me questions about that reintegration. So we're not talking about peanuts here. And at the same time, you know, I'm in this body. I mean, I'm sitting here in a dress and I don't have a beard and I'm, you know, all of that good stuff. But this is how it goes. If you feel inspired anywhere, take the inspirations, inculcate them, move with them. Anything that brings you into surrender, that is the key word. These men have not actually integrated surrender into their works. Where is it there? They describe it, but they don't integrate it. Now it's time to integrate it very consciously. Any of these teachers, if they actually are ready to sit down and tell me where have they integrated surrender, I'll be more than happy. The more, the merrier. I find the works of the mother of Pondicherry very inspiring. Sri and the mother were like amphibians, you know? And this generation, sitting here, for example, is on land now. They were the ones who spoke about bringing down the consciousness into the cells of the body, into here. But they had both been out in their own ways very long already. They were like the amphibians of that spiritual trajectory. Also, if you speak about the evolution of consciousness, it doesn't make any sense. Consciousness is consciousness, it doesn't evolve. The materiality may evolve, and even then, you can't say a human being is more evolved than a plant. So even the idea of evolution of consciousness has to be questioned. I mean, it's maybe not something you can, you can tune into right now, but go home and think about it. How do we speak about the evolution of consciousness? Are we assuming that a human being is more evolved than a plant? That is an assumption which has absolutely no base whatsoever. So, we're talking about huge edifices of concepts that have been, that have sprung forth in the 20th century which don't hold anymore in this century, they will not hold. Even Sri Aurobindo, and I mean, I look up to him above almost anyone else. What does he mean by evolution of consciousness? I don't see it evolving, I see it as is. It is a conceptual premise, and that's what it is, that's what it will always be. Because there is no evolution, it simply is. There is change. And that's what is being said here. And I'm very sure that if Ken Wilbur and I had a conversation, I could, within a couple of hours, convince him about many things which he doesn't know about as yet. Yeah, no, I'm very much appreciative and very much encouraging of the directness and simplicity and the truthful um, contraposition from which you're bringing this. So I'm completely with that. It's more that I'm. I guess what's happening is the search for integration that I somehow feel these sort of impulse of truth must be coming in through different places. Of course it does. I, and uh, some of these examples I mentioned were just some of them. I think the closest one that is really using a lot of your words even, including the surrender and including the identification with the person and the name would be then still Satshri. 
If you have these possibilities, then even better, even better. The point here is that finally it's not about even what I stand for or I am saying, it's about what you experience. How much are you going to keep on reading and listening and... I mean, if you start reading Sri Aurobindo, it will be twenty years till you've read Savitri and even understood one line. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also why I never wrote a book. What is the point of writing another book? There are that many books. It's not at all, you know, posture of superiority, it's just a posture of desperation, that it's not any more about anything else other than here and now and this. Swami Vivekananda said a hundred years ago, I am not the body, and this is what I'm saying, I'm saying I am the body now. What, what am I supposed to do if I'm saying that? I mean, he said that, I said this, we are all wonderful. <laughs> you know what I mean, John? If you're trying to make bridges, it is only about one bridge, if at all, and that is the bridge to the soul. And if you would take up that practice really, because all the reading you do is happening in your head, it's conceptual. It is only when the actual practice is taken up, actually. Surrender to the soul, to try to see how similar is it or how different is it, it is all going on in the head and it will never end. Maybe in this room there's somebody sitting who'll write a book tomorrow saying exactly what I'm saying. Wonderful, even better, no? No, I truly do feel that genuine movements through life seem to come from an intuitive impulse. Then what about Ken Wilber's quadrants? By the time I read the third page, I've forgotten what's on the first page. I mean, it's a genius. He's an intellectual genius, but it's conceptual, the approach, because where is the surrender in that approach? Or for that matter, in Andrew Cohen's approach, or for that matter, in any of the amazing Advaita gurus around right now, where is the surrender? Show it to me. If Master Shri has that surrender, then I am surrendered to him, and happily so. Yeah. I'm for surrender, I'm not for anything else. I'm for surrender as the key to resolving this terrible, sadness that is growing in that amazing body of spiritual seekers on this planet, which are very few in number. And for the surrender there, that's all. The intellectual brilliance is one thing, but... Yeah, yeah. No, it's been always more of a, an additional confirmation to confirm what I've been going through in my own experience. I've never been very much of an avid reader, actually. I've been very selective about it, so I've absolutely not that sensitive for getting lost. The thing about you, John, is that you don't... you don't know surrender. You just don't know what it means. And you have to bend now, that's it. Life is going to push you into a corner and it's going to make you bend. So before life does it to you, why don't you do it? Well, the interesting thing when you say that <laughs> is that I've er or mentioned earlier that there has been for some time now this in somehow yes. truthful pull and that feels to me like it has been sometimes not easy to go with that but yes. when you say I don't completely know and you surrender it, in, there's some genuine empty in me that says that's not true, I do feel there is something I also feel that it's there, there are flashes and moments, yes. But when I'm speaking about you don't know surrender, I mean that sweetness of surrender which comes from the actual bending, not from something pulling you in a direction and you going with it, but the actual bending. This is different, you know. It is a different posture. One is going with the truth, the other one is surrendering to the truth without having to go with it. It's the next step I'm speaking about. The next step after where you are now. That's what I'm speaking about. What I'm doing is I'm just basically pointing you inward, go there, in. It's not something pulling you outward, it's you bending inward. This is a... this is a opposing or opposite movement. I don't know... I don't know if you get what I'm saying, maybe you do actually. It's not about the truth is pulling me in this direction, it is, I, John, am in surrender to the truth. Yeah, it's just that when you speak about this very binary nature, it almost feels like it's too conceptual for the, 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 the truth. Like, Why? Should I go with 
uh, this bread or that bread. But then I am here and I am not here is not conceptual for the truth. No, sorry, what I'm trying to say is when you give the <laughs> when you give two choices, it's still sort of maybe the ego giving those, maybe it's not one of those, maybe it's not anything at all. John, it's not a choice. It's not a choice. It is it is a it is a universal impulse of truth, which is impulsing the system. So if you come with something, the impulse is either yes or no. It's not a choice. There is no choice. That yes or no is not a choice. It is a response to what you have come with. Should I eat this banana? No. There's no choice there. It says what is. The thing is that many find it very difficult to accept this because it's just that, like there's just no spiritual poetry about it. There's no incense stick about it. There's no Bach essence about it. But what can I do if it is like that? And that is what the Agnya, the command is to speak this out fearlessly everywhere. This is not an invention of mine. I guess the reason why I'm speaking more about an ongoing movement is that I don't experience every single moment-to-moment -moment move as a yes or no. It's like you have to start saying something, yes. when you tune into that place, some of the right words come. It's not that there's first the process of shall I say this or that. That's why I feel sometimes less binary and more... Um, mm -hmm. Well, that, that you're right about, but yeah. the thing is that its fundamental movement is binary. Meaning, it's not that you go every time and ask, when you are in that surrendered state, really surrendered state, then the actions that come out of it are... you're in, you're in tune with it, so you move with it, exactly. but, but, but... but there is a difference between that and being pulled into action because it is a surrender that's happening, not a going with it, it's a surrender. It's not going with something, it is actually surrendered to... it is becoming that action. It's a next step after moving into action from that. These are very subtle, subtle things that happen, but there's a difference. If you actually start this practice seriously, you'll know what I'm speaking about, because very soon you'll see the difference between flowing with the truth and being surrendered in the truth. It's a decision to surrender, you know. Now and now. And now, in surrender, in surrender, in surrender. That is the master and this is the servant, the instrument.